Back in the studio, the studio, studio. So, um, a client of ours wanted a resined red, black, and white piece. And so, <laughs> we did a test, obviously, and B didn't really like it, so he kind of just ran his fingers through it, and then we set it on a slant. And it turned out like this, and client liked the test, so now we're doing a, what is this, 24 by 24? Yeah. 24 by 24 actual painting. And it's been a while since we've done a painting painting with resin. So I'm excited because it's a big piece. Yeah. To me, red always looks like bloodshed. But you know what? I know you can make it beautiful. So as usual, we are taping off the bottom. We have our push pin set in and it's level already. So after we get the painting done, we're gonna wait a few hours and pull the tape off. Well, I have a one minute tutorial. Doink, 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 right here. So you can see all the things that we say about taping off the bottom. Basically, it makes for a clean base, bottom, underside, words of your painting without having to like sand it off or cut the, the drips off after the painting's done. Before we resin this, we prepped it as directed in this doink, 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 tutorial. And then, um, so it won't dip in the middle like it, you know, resin's heavy. So if you do a pour, it's gonna dip in the middle. But we prepped it so that the odds of that happening are less because we basically just tightened the canvas. And then after that, we just spray painted a design of red because the colors for this piece are red and black and white. For this piece, we're gonna use um, our go-to resin and Virotex light. Focus, focus. And for the paint we're using, see what kind of paint are we using? Okay, so acrylic white. Yeah. And then the red. <clears throat> and stop by mural paint markers. I don't know if that's available in most like craft or hobby stores. You may have to order that. We got ours from a local shop called Azel. I don't know if that's like a national store. So for this piece, it looks like we're using almost 20 ounces. Our resin is a one-to-one, -one, which means it's equal parts resin to hardener. And make sure that you pour according to the box that you get your resin out of, because some are two-to-one, some are four-to-one, and everything in the middle, which is one option, obviously. So, um, Make sure you mix it evenly 
and thoroughly. Like right now you can see little swirls in it. Um, for this amount, we'll probably mix for almost three minutes. Make sure you mix and scrape the bottom and the sides and the stir stick in order to make sure that there are no weak spots left in your resin because it is a pain when everything sets beautifully and there's one spot that decides that it's gonna just be a sticky mess forever and ever. You're gonna see bubbles, don't worry about that. We'll address those later with the heat. What did I say, flamery? No, maybe. Sticky. I should have gloves on as a helper. We always put a little bit of clear down. This helps the resin to flow over your surface more easily. And also, if you have painted some kind of design on the bottom of it, this helps so you can see it. Because if you just have opaque paints mixed in your resin, then you're not gonna be able to see through it at all. It doesn't have to be a thick coat. Anything that... Mm, what's the word? No idea. You're always coming up with different words for different things. No, but just put your hand in there and scoop out it. Um, so yeah, it doesn't have to be a lot, just enough to I don't want to say moisten because that's a horrible word, but that's basically what it is. Can we take your bracelet off? Are you good? I'm just like crazy about doing one this big like this <clears throat> with this bottom. This resin in particular has about a 30, 45 minute working time. And you warm this resin up, right? Um, yes and no, not this particular, but it was warm. Oh yeah, you did the test first. Doesn't take much pigment to dye your resin. Start with a little bit and add a little bit at a time to make sure you get the opacity that you want. Different smell, like it, it, like you can smell it when the paint hits it. The resin doesn't smell, but when the paint mixes it, it definitely smells different. Changes the science. And I did notice that if you put paint in here and you let it settle to the bottom, it does not mix very well. So mix the paint as soon as you put it in there because it will settle at the bottom and it will stick to the cup and it will not want to mix well. Did it leave like chunks in the surface? No, it just took forever to mix it. Yeah, okay. Let me 
know if I need to set this down and make some more resin. Don't like oh, cut it short. color puddle. I mean, it makes a black or a clear. It's definitely a different color red, though. I should be really not taking. I don't know why I did that. When you say different, like you mix it, like. Literally this a different spray color? Spray paint. Uh, it's a different color. It looks ugly. I literally just did that. And now... Yeah. Oh, my God. Now it's turning pink. Torch it, tilt it. Do you want black? What kind of black do you want to use? An ink? I don't know what you want me to do with that. Are you happy with this? No, but I, well, I don't know what you're going to do with black. Well, I was going to mix more red. <clears throat> that was a hell of a lot of black. I mean, you just don't want it, because you want it. Mm-hmm. You tilt it. Yeah. I think you should put something dark. I don't know, because I don't want it to look like a bullseye, but I feel like it should have some darkness to it. I like that. It almost looks like a rose. I love this, like that white edge. Look how amazing that looks. Yeah, I need to heat it real quick one more time because you dropped it. Is that a chunk of paint on your bubble? Yeah. 